activist. Uh, my name is Ree, I'm representing the Love Activist in Brighton. Uh, if you don't know about the Love Activist movement, it started back in London um, in November last year. Um, it was a, basically it's a um, built up network of people that decided to take direct action. Um, um, it initially started when a group called Occupy Democracy occupied Parliament Square last October, a nine-day occupation, and they've been there ever, um, every month since, and they're going to be there every month up until the election time. Um, the issue there was that protesters weren't allowed to sleep, and were getting really exhausted, so a lot of activists cracked the building, an old NHS building that had been empty for almost two years, um, so protesters can get some rest and obviously open the door to people that are homeless as well. Um, Occupy Democracy are pushing for people, environment, democracy for, for, for profit whilst occupying Parliament Square. After they got evicted from that NHS building, they occupied a bank, well, what used to be a bank called Charing Cross Road. And they've done that just before Christmas with the intention of opening it on Christmas Day um, for people that are homeless and to have Christmas dinner for everybody. They got their court papers to go to court on the 29th of December and then got illegally evicted on Christmas Eve. One activist called an out of hours judge on Christmas Eve and the judge issued a statement to say that no one and nothing should get in the way of the protesters setting out what they aim to do. And the police said it didn't apply to them and that they needed a bailiff to get back in the building knowing full well they wouldn't be able to find one on Christmas Eve. Have you got yeah, they didn't give up. The police put up fences around the building which the protesters took hold of, took it across the road, set up tables, and the community in London brought loads of food, equipment, and warm clothes to redistribute to people that are homeless and in need. And they've been there right up to mid-February. And the street, homeless street picture in London is still going in various places. During that time, they did get shifted down to Trafalgar Square on the night before New Year's Eve. And they were affected with the dispersal orders from Trafalgar Square numerous times. The police confiscated their equipment and chucked it in a bin. But the protesters got it back out of the bin and set it up again. Some of the Love Actors travel around the UK to other cities and encourage them to set up street kitchens in their local areas. <coughs> The Love Activists of Brighton have been taking direct action setting up a street kitchen at the clock tower as often as possible. They just go into a routine of being there every Sunday with volunteers in Brighton and it's been, the backbone of it has been supported by the community, donating food, equipment, their time, their energy, spreading the word and the love. And other groups have also supported the Love Activist movement. I mean, um, the Living Red campaign set up with us one day to raise awareness of housing and homelessness issues. Bright Benefits campaign have come down and helped at the kitchen, donated our equipment to make banners for today. Bright in the Needs helped us at the beginning of spreading the word and helping us get hold of equipment and they also donated some food for the kitchen. And the Food Waste Collective and the Royal Dog Food Project who um, intercept food surplus to cut down on all the criminalised, criminal food waste that goes on in the world. And, we, and they give us some of their surplus surplus which we redistribute from the kitchen. The authorities in the system needs to deal with the real issues instead of criminalising vulnerable people living on the street. There are 1.5 million empty buildings and 112,070 uh, homeless people in the UK. That works out 10 properties per homeless person. 
there is not a higher housing crisis. If you gave us a hundred crowbars, we could fix the problem in an hour. Nice one, Felix. But the truth is, people deserve better than that. They deserve stability and security. They shouldn't be squatting buildings under the threat of security beating them up, dragging them out, and the police arresting them. And I'm sure taxpayers don't want to be spending their money on extra policing and evictions. I'm sure as hell that they'd rather their money be spent on extra social housing and homing people. One guy now on the street for the past two years, he's been on the same spot with no problems with the police. And in the past month, the police has increased with a crackdown on homelessness. He's been asked to move on with no reason, no rational reason. He's not obstructing the highway. And he's not antisocial. And he expressed it that it's like he made him feel like he's been asked to walk for a brick wall. Because he wasn't made out to the where he could go. And nobody should be made to feel like that. Go back to his belief that as a community, we can and should keep coming together and pushing for a system to put an end to homelessness now. Thank you.